wondering, as you look around the country and you see the uh, success that organizations and the Democratic Party and candidates have had, uh, places like Georgia or Arizona, um, those were both places that were long-term uh, efforts, uh, you know, long-time GOP strongholds, and yet, uh, you know, success came uh, driven largely by that kind of grassroots work. What are some of the lessons you have drawn from that for Texas? Because that has obviously been the holy grail uh, for Democrats and, and progressives has been uh, getting to the point that that demographic change really comes to bear fruit in elections in Texas. You know, I, I look at the work that Stacey Abrams has done and Ense Ufat and the New Georgia Project and Fair Fight and so many others on the ground in, in Georgia. And I've taken from that that this cannot be about a single candidate or campaign or election or cycle. This has to be year in, year out for many years uh, together. And, and, you know, Stacey started Maso Menos 10 years ago uh, on this effort, along with, again, many other people, too many to name to help bring about the victories that we just saw at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Um, Jeremy, there are a number of great groups in Texas who have been doing this work for a long time. The Texas Organizing Project is one that, that specifically tries to reach voters in communities of color who are low propensity voters. And again, the targets of voter suppression tactics from the state of Texas to engage them, not just around an election, but around their lives. What's important to you? What would you like to see better? How could voting make a difference? And can I stay in touch with you ahead of this next election? They have been so responsible in groups like them for so much of the progress that we've seen in Texas, whether it's voter turnout, whether it's elections that we are winning at a local level, or the fact that we are coming so close on a statewide level and you mentioned you know, our, our importance in national elections, 38 electoral college votes, soon to be 41 after the final count for, for this census. This state can, can literally define the political future of this country, but it's only gonna happen through that kind of grassroots organizing down at the precinct neighborhood and front porch level that groups like Texas Organizing Project, Powered by People and others are doing right now. The other thing Jeremy had to say is that, that donors, money, and financing this is critical. Uh, I don't know what was ultimately spent in Georgia. You may have a better idea than, than I do, but it'll be in the billion dollar range all told. Uh, Texas, uh, which is about four times the size of Georgia, had but a fraction of that spent on our election. So if we can match this grassroots organizing, this willingness to go out and register voters and help to turn them out in a state that does everything possible to keep them at home, if we can match that with, with the donors and the investment and the financing that allows us to do this at scale, you, you really have a ball game here in Texas, not unlike what you saw in Georgia, not unlike what you saw in Arizona, not unlike what we hope to see in, in other states that for far too long were written off, but I think are in play once we invest in them and do the work. J Street, as you know, as having been a uh, endorsed member of Congress on our, our PAC list, uh, our political strategy for the first decade of our existence has been to uh, endorse and then raise money for individual candidates and send our resources and support to the candidates. Um, in 2020, we, for the first time, changed that up a little and started to invest in some Georgia efforts, some Wisconsin efforts. How do you see it from the ground in Texas? How, how do you see a national advocacy group uh, like J Street uh, with, with a very specific issue agenda that may not be at the forefront of the concerns of the people on the ground in, in Texas. How do you see it plugging into the critical grassroots long-term efforts that you are talking about? Jeremy, I, I think this is where the magic is because as, as we all know, so much of, of campaign spending uh, is you know used to reach people over the airwaves or through slick mailed pieces or to finance you know, the, the very operations and logistics of the campaign. And that spending and its impact tends to evaporate as soon as the election is called. By investing in grassroots organizers and the people who we hope year in, year out are connecting with those voters and future voters, we build out and invest in an infrastructure 
that persists long after the election is over and makes it that much more likely that we'll be successful in the next election. And so we, we've seen, unfortunately, in Texas, um, you know, some really great candidates, some really great causes, and some really great donors uh, drop in, um, you know, invest in, in the moment, and then leave. And we, we, we find ourselves rebuilding cycle after cycle. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, if you had a, a college basketball team and you had to rehire the coach and bring on new players uh, every single year. There's no consistency or rhythm or predictability in, in the effort. You're not really able to build on past successes as effectively as you otherwise would be. So by investing at the most local level and supporting these grassroots organizations and organizers, specifically the people who are reaching voters in the very neighborhoods that they grew up in and that they live in and who know how to speak the language literally in Texas. That language might be Spanish, that language might be English, that language might be Vietnamese in Houston, which has more Vietnamese language speakers than any city on the planet outside of Vietnam. You want to support those who know and are of those communities. That's how we're going to win elections over the long term. So I think that is the most sustainable strategy and I'm really pleased to hear that that's one that J Street is pursuing. Well, Beto, thank you so much for uh, your insights and uh, thank you for your friendship to J Street and uh, personally over the course of these years. We are looking forward to a long and continued partnership. Uh, and I wanna just give you uh, one final chance here to see if you wanna break any news about any personal plans you might have for <laughs> next steps uh, and uh, looking ahead to 2022. Uh, uh, well, thank you for, for inviting me. And I, I've got no news to break, but I, I do wanna say this very quickly. Uh, because it's, but I must say it because it's important. Uh, I've told you this privately. I'll, I'll, I'll tell those who are watching. Um, th there's been no organization that has had a, a bigger impact on me and my time in Congress than J Street. And not just about the issues uh, that you know J Street first came to talk with me about, and not just how revelatory the experience of traveling to uh, Israel and the West Bank was, but the way in which you do this work and that you center it in people and in volunteers and in members and in lived experiences, that cuts through all of the talking points and the cynicism and so much of the baloney that defines uh, life in, in Washington, D.C. and as an elected member of Congress or as a candidate. And uh, I, I really feel as though uh, you all have continued to perfect some of the best practices in strengthening our democracy and making sure that we have honest and real conversations about important public policy. And so um, that's a testament to you, Jeremy, but it's also a testament to your membership and the organization and the incredible staff with whom you work. And so uh, you, you will not find a bigger fan of J Street out there, certainly not in El Paso. Uh, and uh, so keep up the great work and, and thanks for always uh, reaching out and including me and, and making sure that we know what you all are doing and, and support it in whatever way that we can.